Hello everybody. Today we're going to work an average velocity problem. When we do these problems, we are going to be using this equation, which is nothing new for us, delta d over delta t. You will see me dropping the delta out of this as I progress with the problem. Remember, delta is just final minus initial, and so uh, we will just kind of keep that in mind. There are two segments in this problem, and we're actually told some information about these segments relative to one another. I don't know how far the trip is, but I know that whatever distance is traveled in the first part of the trip, that's actually equal to the distance traveled in the second part of the trip. And if you go through and you look, you know the overall average velocity, that's this number right here, for this entire trip. So I might come over here and through this equation, the v total, the overall average velocity, is going to be equal to d total over t total. So that's going to be relevant here. I'm also told how fast the car was going in the first segment, but I am trying to find how fast it was going in the second segment. So we're specifically doing this problem because it appears like we don't have enough information, but it turns out that we do. Remember, anytime you have a average velocity problem like this, you will write down this particular equation once for each segment. And so I have V1 is equal to D1 divided by T1. I will write it again for this one. V2 is equal to D2 over T2. And then you can always write it a third time, which is for the total. Now, if I plug in the information that I have, I can say that in V1 was 48 I'm going to leave out, it's kind of hard for me to get all the units in on this. Everything is going to be in miles or hours or miles per hour. So I know I'm going to have unit agreement because there are no unit conversions that need to happen. D1 is equal to D2. They are all equal to D and I'm just going to start using the generic D variable for that. The time is unknown to me. So it's still the time that it takes in the first segment. I'll go over to V2. V2 has to stay because that is the variable that I'm solving for. Although D2 now becomes just generic D and T2 is something that I don't know. I come over to this side over here and I can say that the total velocity of 60 miles per hour is equal to D total is going to be 2D divided by T total which is going to be T1 plus T2. If you look at this equation off here, you see that there are three things that I don't know. If we come look at these other two equations for each segment, you'll see that they have a T1, a T2 in them. They both have this D. The strategy that I'm going to employ is I'm going to go ahead and solve this expression for T1. So that's going to be T1 is equal to D divided by 48. I'm going to do that same sort of thing over here and I'm going to see that T2 is equal to D over V2. And now what I can do is I can go in and I can plug in these expressions here for T1 and T2 respectively. So now it's going to look something like this. Now admittedly, you may not quite see that so clearly, why you should go about this process in the way that I just did. I certainly know in advance that what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get my D's to cancel. So I was keeping everything in terms of D and plugging in over there. And if you look at this, you will see that there's a D in the numerator and then each term that's in the denominator has a D. I will remind you that the overall strategy is to write down your equations in this form that we were doing here and you are trying to see what you can actually make progress on. In this particular problem, it is not totally evident what you can make progress on because every single one of these equations has two or more variables in it. And so we needed to start plugging in variables easier problems should have a section somewhere in there where you have 
two things that you know and you can solve for the second. Then it's a very sequential process to solve things out. Anyways, carrying on with this particular problem. The D's have now canceled. This entire quantity down here is in the denominator. My numerator is now just a 2. Over here, I have 60 divided by 1. As long as I don't mess with this denominator over on this side of things here, I can go ahead and just inverse both sides of the equation. And that's going to look like this when I'm done. 1 over 60, so just inverse to that. 1 over 48 plus 1 over V2. All of this is over 2. Well, I'm going to multiply 2 to both sides of the equation here. So now I have 2 over 60 or 1 over 30. So I will do one more simplification here before I really start to work on that. 1 over 30 is equal to 1 over 48 plus 1 over V2. I'm just going to clear a little board space real quick. Now I'm going to just go ahead and have 130 and then I'm going to subtract this from both sides of the equation. So now I have 1 over 30 minus 1 over 48 is equal to 1 over V2. This is certainly just a decimal and I can go ahead and simplify that here. So this ends up being 0 0.0125 is equal to 1 over V2. And if I inverse both sides of this now so that I have V2 in the numerator, I will find that V2 is equal to 80. And again, I'm going to pull back my units, miles per hour. So this is my final answer here. And if you come up and look at the way that the problem is stated, it says, then they explain to you that they were able to make up the lost time after being stuck behind the semi without speeding and managed to stay under 75 miles per hour for the second part of the trip. Calculate how fast they must have actually been traveling. That is what we've just done here. So this would be a mathematical proof to show that actually they did indeed have to go faster than 75 miles per hour in order to truly average this speed that was given up here. The underlying principle as a quick reminder is remember it is not the distance that is so very crucial and important on average velocity problem. The most impactful velocity is going to be the one that you spend the most time traveling at. And when you are traveling fast, you don't spend as much time covering distance. And so it becomes a weighted average where the slower velocities are more heavily weighted. So that was the sample problem with this kind of bizarre style of problem where it appears like you don't have enough information. Hopefully this made sense to you. Remember that it can be much easier if you have a little bit more information. But if this made sense, you should certainly let your computer know.